Welcome to USMLE Sarti. We are committed to empowering IMGs. We're excited to guide you on your match journey. Don't forget to click subscribe and turn on notifications so you can get notified whenever we add new content. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter for the latest tips and tricks regarding everything USMLE. Now, let's dive into it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to USMLE Sarti, to our channel. We're so excited to guide you on this match journey. So today we are going to continue our series. We're going to do a timeline series where we talk about the match journey um, from beginning to end. So here with me, um, my name is Shayla. I'm the VP of Student Success here at USMLE Sarti. And here with me, I have Pawan, our chief mentor. So hello, Pawan. Hey Shayla, thank you, and I appreciate uh, you, uh, you know, doing this series for the upcoming match 2025, where each month we'll talk about what to do this month, how to get prepared for the next, so that uh, uh, the applicants, the students, have a clearer idea of what to do for match. Yeah, I think that's the goal is to paint it out each month what what needs to be done so nothing gets forgotten. So last month in January, we did a really big, awesome webinar with a bunch of pre-match, some of our pre-match students and our other Sarthi students that are applying. And they talked about their strategies, how to overcome red flags, uh, why do you need to start preparing this early in the season and things like that. So make sure to check out that video. Um, the link will be in the description for that one. And with that, I think we'll get going on our February series. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, so first, I think the first kind of question is the match is still eight months away. So why why are we talking so early? What do I need to do at this point? Yeah, so that, that's a good, uh, very good question. Uh, the current season, 2024, ends on March 11, but time flies, you know, very, very quickly. We will be in the next season. September will be right on us. And uh, we really want to make sure all of us who are applying we focus on rotations, at least three to four months of USCE. Research is becoming increasingly important, as well as general planning for the match, whether it is your ERA CV, personal statement, interview preparation, and all that. Now, when it comes to research, there are two types of research. One is on-site, the other is remote research. On-site research opportunities will start uh, becoming available after this match ends when students who are doing research, say at Cleveland Clinic, May or other facilities, uh, they leave the positions because they've matched. So that'll be something uh, to think about. Remote research, of course, uh, we have courses. There may be other things you can do. Research is becoming important. So plan research in a way that by the time applications come up, uh, you at least have something submitted. So the sooner you start, the better it is. And this month would be something to start on in research. When it comes to rotation, uh, many of our students may or may not have the visa, but if you have already processed the visa, uh, this would be the month to actually get a head start. Why am I saying this? Because uh, as you hit July or August, uh, there are many applications IMG applicants who are in the US and trying to do rotations, then some good rotations may not be available. And even if they are available, you know, as you have more students per preceptor or per physician, the time that a preceptor can spend with you goes down. The quality of LOR is great if you do a rotation, uh, say this month or next month or in April. So from that perspective, uh, rotations, the earlier you can start, uh, the better. And of course, uh, we have over 200 rotations. So maybe we can post a, a link uh, uh, on this video on the rotations and their availability. So rotations and research is something that you really absolutely have to start thinking about uh, now. And then, of course, is the match planning in terms of uh, uh, you know, if you need end-to-end uh, -end planning, that's where our team can also help. We've already started with our match plans to help you with ERA, CV, PS, the entire roadmap and interview prep. So the sooner you join, uh, maybe a better idea. Yeah, that's a really good point. It seems like there's just so much to do. As the students know, it's it's overwhelming. So it's kind of nice to start now, get an idea of what your options are, 
And yeah, like you said, the rotations and the research are going to go quickly. So now's a great time. Yep. Um, okay, perfect. That's an important part. So then it comes to specialty. How do students, what should they be doing at this point? And how do they kind of narrow down what specialty to be focusing on? Okay, another great question. So first, I would, uh, you know, draw your attention to the webinar that we just held last Saturday. We invited a lot of our math students as well as our attendings to talk about what a particular specialty entails day in the life careers after that specialty and what it takes to match in that specialty. So I think that a webinar uh, should be a good starting point. And, and then of course, if you are still undecided about the specialty, we can uh, give you a free session a profile review based on say your scores, your research, your rotations and your match answers where you should focus. And that's something we also do in detail if you join us. So I think there are more than one data point for you to consider, but yes, now would be the time to kind of narrow down on your primary specialty so that the next seven to eight months, you can focus on building your experiences and skills in that specialty. Great, yes, thank you for bringing that webinar up too. We'll link that in the description. Um, okay, so the next topic, I want to back up a little bit and talk about exams. There may be some students who haven't taken exams yet or have have taken one but not the other. So what when is the last date that they can have exams taken and taken care of? So it'll be a good idea to think about ECFMG certification. Ideally, you would want to apply, say, around 28 September when the ERAS opens up with ECFMG certification. Now, if you back it up, uh, ECFMG certification uh, needs step one, CK, OET, and, and pathway application. So all done. Uh, so if you were to you know, follow the sequence of step one, CK, OET, and all that, I would say uh, August, early August, if you can get done with CK and then OET, there may still be time to get certified in time uh, to apply uh, for the for the match with the ECFMG certification. But you know to have a buffer in place, I think July would be the time that you should absolutely try to take CK, and so that you have a couple of months to go over this uh, pathway application certification and all that. Okay, which is a good example of why we're starting early because July is already six months or so from us. So so how much time do students usually take to study for each exam? What do you recommend? So at this point, you should already be about to take step one or should have already taken step one. If you're thinking of taking step one, say in May, then it's a very ambitious target to finish step one and CK before September deadline. So assuming you've already done step one and step one is pass fail. So, you know, hopefully this is out of the way or about to be out of the way. Then a lot of students take between four to six months for CK. Uh, so again, you know, this would be, we're talking July. Uh, OET is another exam, but it is, I would say, uh, de again, depends on your English proficiency, but a lot of students can, do it in a week or less. It's not a harder exam as far as many students are concerned. So OET for a week, that should help you. Great, okay. And then what about uh, step three? Um, okay. How do I know if I need to take that? Yes, so step three is an exam which has become also increasingly important. Now, technically you are all only supposed to take or you're required to take step three only in first year of your residency. But given the increasing competition, given that step one has gone pass fail, a lot of programs expect you to take step three also by September or October. Uh, now, do you need step three? Good question. If you are an older uh, graduate, uh, more than five years, if you have red flags like attempts or low scores, if you have gaps in your education, then probably you need step three. If you're a recent graduate, say with very high scores, you may not need step three. However, uh, once you enroll with us, we will go over your profile 
and we can tell you whether you should do step three or not. And then, you know, we can help you plan further. Now, of course, uh, many of us may not know that uh, ECFMG certification is a requirement for step three. So you cannot take step three without being ECFMG certified. And step three can only be taken in the US. So you have to come to US, you have to have the visa, only then you can take step three. Okay, and the other exams, you don't have to be in the US, right? No, uh, step one, CK, OET, you can all take it outside. Okay, great. Okay, so you've touched on the ECFMG certification quite a bit. Um, I think some of just the questions are like, how does the timeline work? When do I buy the token? When do I need to be certified? And what do I need to do to, to finish that? Yep, yep. yep. So the uh, to be able to apply to ERAS, uh, you know, uh, there is something called the ERAS token. Uh, it will open in early June. It costs about uh, $200. So you have to buy that token and then, uh, you know, you can uh, start the paperwork or the admin work for applying for the match. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, you should do it uh, by September, all the ERAS, PS, CV, et cetera. But of course, this ERAS token is available till e even if you want to apply slightly late. Uh, in terms of ECFMG certification, like I said, step one, CK, OET, and something known as a pathway requirements. You have to complete the pathway requirements. There are six pathways. Pathways uh, and their details for a season will open up again sometimes uh, later this year maybe in june that's when they open up most of the students uh, at least from india and that part of the world the subcontinent will be eligible for pathway one so in for being eligible for pathway one the medical council where you are from or your state will send some documents directly to ecfmg and including say certificate of good standing, et cetera. And then, uh, you know, the process uh, can be completed for pathway certification. And we'll have to see if uh, ECFMG has some new requirements for pathway. Sometimes it can change. Uh, now, like I said, uh, almost everyone should be eligible for pathway one. Now, there are some other pathways, for example, pathway six. Uh, pathway 6 generally will apply if, say, for example, you have failed Step 2 CS. Now, CS was an exam pre-COVID, and uh, for those of you who failed CS but could not retake it because the exam was just, uh, uh, you know, archived and no longer available, then you have to go through Pathway 6. For Pathway 6, you have to do something called mini CEX evaluation, so there are six evaluations. Again, details will be available when the pathway application for the next season opens up. But remember, there are about six pathways. Most of you will be in pathway one. So once this pathway application is also done, you should be uh, ready for ECFMG certification. ECFMG charges close to 900, I think 925, shall I, if I'm not wrong, uh, for this certification. The point being that uh, being ready to apply for match involves a lot of paperwork also in addition to say rotations, research, match planning, and sometimes this paperwork can delay your application. So make sure uh, you are on top of the paperwork. Great. And I just wanted to throw out, make sure you check the ECFMG website for all the deadlines, how long everything lasts, which pathway you need to do. Um, we Absolutely. may not know all of those little details too. So you'll have to check with them. Yep. And uh, we will have details on our YouTube channel and Instagram. So, you know, if you want to follow that, uh, subscribe to that, we'll let you know as well. Great. Okay. Uh, I have one more main topic and that is visas. I feel like there's so many different nuances that go on with the visa, but can you kind of briefly explain the different types of visas? Yep. So for rotations purposes uh, or coming to the U.S. Uh, before you start your residency, uh, there's something called B1, B2 category of visa, which is a visitor's visa. 
and a lot of students who are on B1, B2 will try to get US clinical experience on this visa. And if you need help in visa invitation letters or such things, as you plan other rotations, we can help you in, in this invitation letter also through our lawyer. Sometimes the physicians will also write it or our team will write it. So that's one category of visa if you are here to do just rotations. The second category of visa, if you have a full-time, say, research job, you know, uh, say at Cleveland Clinic and, and Mayo Clinic, Harvard, et cetera, a research fellow or something in research, this is, again, pre-match. Uh, if you are here, you are able to get a full-time research job. This is generally on J-1 visa, the J-1 research visa, exchange scholar visa, but you need to have a job in hand to be able to do that, and ECFMG will process that visa. Then, of course, if you match, then you can do your residency on one of the two visas. One is H-1B visa, which is a work visa, or you will be getting a J-1 clinical visa. Uh, J-1, like I mentioned, is sponsored by ECFMG. H-1B is sponsored by the hospital or the program where you match. So we can talk more about the post-match uh, visas, but at this point, you have to just make sure if you're coming to the US, it's B1, B2 visa for rotations for most countries. For example, if you are a Canadian, uh, you know, you don't need B1, B2 visa to just come in. So, but most countries uh, uh, do need B1, B2 visa to come in for rotations. And does the Sarthi team sponsor those J1 or H1 visas? So, no. So Sarthi team or any of such entities, we cannot sponsor you the visa, the H1B, the J, or even B1, B2. What we can do is if you are coming here for rotations, we can provide a supporting document that uh, you are coming here for this rotation and therefore a B1, B2 visa may be granted. So we can give you supporting documents, but we are not the ones to sponsor your visas. Okay, great. Yep, so make sure you do look into that, which whatever country you're in, kind of figure out that process. I know a lot of students are, the appointments are way out months in advance. So, so do check into that early. So that's actually, before we wrap up, it's a good question. What happens if my appointments are six or seven months uh, you know, in advance? Should I apply? Should I not apply? Can I, do I have to go into the match? And I think what we have observed over the years, even after COVID is, depending on the type of tele-rotation, you could still have a very competitive profile for match. You know, you could do some tele-rotations where, uh, you know, you will have uh, patient interaction, you will have EMR access, all done remotely. You can do remote research. Many of our students have been able to match even with this, uh, although they could not get visas on time. So something to think about, maybe we can discuss in the next uh, next uh, month's uh, series. No, that's a great point. The visa is a big, big issue, I know. So yeah, it's great that there's alternatives. Okay, great. Those are all my questions. Did you have any other topics before I wrap up? No, I, I think we covered quite a bit for this month. So, you know, uh, this is the month to get started for um, many of you. And also those who may have applied for uh, this season, but unfortunately have less interviews or no interviews. Uh, I think we'll do a webinar on SOAP itself. So SOAP will be a part of it. Uh, so preparation for SOAP, something that can be done in this uh, month, but we'll talk about SOAP in our, one of our webinars. Absolutely. Great. Thanks. Yeah, I think this was great. I think we covered lots of things. There's lots to do just in this month of February. So make sure you go through, take care of all these things, anything that you might need to do, contact our team if you have any questions, and then don't forget to follow along on our next video series for next month. Thank you, Shela. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that video provided valuable insights for your journey. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And check out our website for details on how we can guide you to a successful match.